Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? That's good. That's good. That's good. I'm glad everyone is doing well this morning. Uh, as I turn on uh, live here, I keep trying to do its own thing. Anyway, good morning and welcome to Kingdom Application Ministries. Good morning. Welcome to Kingdom Application Ministries. There is a word in the house this morning. Amen. Amen. And before we get started, I'm going to take a sip of this water. Because <laughs> we we'll, we'll know how the Lord is going to lead, but we're going to go. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you right now, God, for who you are, who you who you have been to us, oh God. Father, we just bless your name this morning. Father, we honor you for you being our Father and our Lord, for loving us beyond ourselves, oh God. Father, for picking us up, oh God, in the places that we thought we couldn't be redeemed from, oh God. But Father, you showed us that there is light, that you are light, and Father, there's righteousness. And so, Father, we thank you for your righteousness. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who shed his blood, who died upon the cross for our sins, O oh God. Father, that we might come into the knowledge of who you are, God, that we might take on his yoke and learn of him, O oh God. Father, that we belong to you, God, that righteousness rules, it reigns, it is the scepter of the kingdom. Father, let your righteousness be upon us, O oh God. Let it be upon every believer, O oh God. Father, that the prayers of the righteous might avail much, O oh God. Father, that they availeth much on behalf of your believers, O oh God. Father, that when we pray for the sick, they recover, O oh God. Father, when we ask anything according to your will, O oh God, Father, you hear and you answer prayer. And so, Father, we pray this morning, God. Father, as we come into your presence this morning, Father, Father, as we come into your presence this morning, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome on these airways. Have your way in the hearts of your people. Have your way in the minds of your people. And we just thank you this morning. We thank you for the word. And God, let it fall upon good ground. Father, let it be a blessing to all those that hear God in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, Charla. Good morning, doctor. How you doing? How you doing? This morning, amen, I said there was a word in the house and there is a word in the house. And we're coming from Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Good morning, Melissa. Uh, we're in the 59th chapter and we're going to start reading at verse 7. And it says, their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood, shed innocent blood. Their thoughts, their thoughts, uh, I, I got I to gotta pause that. It says, their thoughts, their, he said, wait a minute, their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their path. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. And for theme this morning, I'm saying peace they know not. Peace they know not. In this scripture, look at this. It's, we're, we're talking about the way of peace. And the way of peace, they know not. See, we, we, we and, and what's, so, what's so different about this is we're talking about this generation that we're living in. Amen? We're talking about this generation that we're living in because of what they're dealing with. Okay? We have an enemy. That's, that's, let's just get that off the top. We have an enemy, an enemy that has set in motion the plans to destroy our children. They set in motion to destroy us. Amen. And so it's an elaborate schemes that, that remove the fathers from the home. 
It placed the mothers on the job, which left the children unsupervised by either parent. They then begin to program them by the television until we see this scripture in the word is coming to pass. <clears throat> I want you to get some understanding of what I'm saying here. So I, I, I want you to, I, I don't want to leave you out there. I want you to understand what I'm talking about right here. Right now, our children are being raised by the television. They're being raised by the, the radio and the internet. And so, therefore, the teaching that they are receiving is that which is programmed by our enemies. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Oh, I know that. They, well, there's there's the the people that they modeling after are black. Yes, they are. But they're getting paid to behave that way. They're getting paid to look ridiculous. They are getting paid to promote the sinful nature of mankind. Yes, yes, I said they're getting paid. They're making hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I ain't say millions, hundreds of thousands maybe, and by the time they get all their expenses covered that they didn't spend, they're making tens of thousands of dollars, if that much, to uh, teach, promote the sinful nature of man. Ah, uh, I want you to let, let's look at it in the modern English version and what this verse is saying. It says in verse eight, their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, devastation and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they do not know and there is no justice in their ways. They have made their paths crooked. Whoever walks in them does not know peace. Now, see, I, I want to talk about this because right now there's multiple shootings going on in, in the major cities at the drop of a hat. I mean, car accident shootings, shootings down the interstate. People are losing their ever-loving mind. They are walking in the ways that they know not peace. They're agitated at all times, and it only takes a little glimmer or a, a, a slight stare from someone that they do not know to send them off into the ways of evil. Uh, 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 they, they feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Oh, they're ready to pull their gap out in a minute and just start firing off. Don't care about who they shooting at because... Ain't nobody been to the gun range. Ain't nobody took a class on how to operate. It's just a give and go. The devastation and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they do not know. See, see, naturally the flesh gravitate to what is wrong. Uh, you can take a child and, 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 and ask them, you know, set the cookies out. You ask them, did they take the cookie? They will automatically start off and say, no. I, I didn't eat the cookie with crumbs all over the face. So this flesh naturally gravitates to negativity. It naturally gravitates to sin. And he said, the Bible tells us, in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. Uh, he, we, we do it automatically. So we were made, see, in my generation, we were made to go to church. Uh, this generation here has one parent. And on Sundays, most are too tired to drag their children to church. We ain't gonna even talk about getting them involved in Sunday school or, or the choir, the children's choir, or any of those other activities because they're too exhausted. Ladies, I, I keep telling you, oh, I'm a single parent. I'm, you wanna wear the single parent badge because the world had told you that was cool. No, you will be exhausted and your kids will suffer because of the simple fact there is not two people in the home raising them, giving them the things they need, putting them into position for success. Yes, we have been bought into the world system because the enemy, our enemy, has moved in and, and shuffled things around. And so now, guess what? <coughs> we're dealing with... What we're, we're dealing with the aftermath of what has been going on for the past 40 years. Ah, we have to understand 
I, I, I want to look at some statistics. You know, most of the murders today are committed by young black men. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Dealing with gun violence alone, just, just gun violence, we ain't going to talk about the fact that a lot of people, like, like for instance, I saw a video where a young lady walks into a store, a convenience store in Dallas, and, and loses or misplaces her phone, and she asks the people in the store, and they start laughing at her. And during the midst of their laughter, she gets so angry, she destroys the whole store. I mean, just destroys everything. So what happens to her now? That anger, that thing she'd been taught, she'd been programmed how to do by our enemy, she just did. And she fell into the trap that they laid for her. Uh, let's deal with these numbers. Uh, per per 100,000 citizens in the U.S., let's, let's look at this. Across the U.S., there's likely that 11 of uh, every 100,000 white people will be killed by gun violence. Where there's approximately 23.6 blacks will be killed by gun violence. That's 6.5 Latino will be killed by gun violence. That's 2.9 Asians will be, Asian Island Pacific will be killed by gun violence. And there's 14.1 Native Americans will be killed by gun violence out of every 100,000 citizens. Do you see something wrong with that picture? We are the least numbers, but the greatest per 100,000 of dying from gun violence. Okay? The per 100,000 people, 14 black, 14 Native Americans and 23 23.6 rounded up, 24 blacks will die to gun violence. Whereas in Caucasian, it's 11. Latino is almost seven. Asian Island Pacifica is three. There's something wrong because the, what's wrong is we are the ones that have been programmed. We are the ones that didn't have the parents at home See, you couldn't can't you can't count on grandmother to watch the kids because grandmama's still out dating too. Ain't nobody settled in the family structure have been destroyed by the enemy, and he is doing exactly what he wants to do. He programmed the kids to fill his prison system. Let me just keep going. The message Bible says his behavior is acting like this. Isaiah 59, verse 7. It says. They compete in a race to do evil and run to be first to murder. They plan and plot evil, think and breathe evil, and leave a trail of wrecked lives behind them. Uh, see, I want you to understand what's going on here. He said they know nothing about peace and less than nothing about justice. They do not know how to have just behavior because why? Because they have been programmed, been programmed by the enemy. They make tor torturously twisted roads and torturously twisted roads and no peace for the wretch who walks down those roads. There is no peace when you fall into that trap. <coughs> no peace. And the reason there's no peace is because you don't understand. They don't understand the traps that have been set for them and what they have just walked into. How many of you have seen that TV show, The First 48? Uh, uh, the First 48, it documents when a murder takes is committed, the perpetrator has the greatest chance of being found within the first 48 hours after it happens. So if you have, so what you have here is a TV show that documents uh, the, the police officers in several different cities like Dallas, Tulsa, Memphis, Atlanta, New Orleans, Miami, and a few others. Some in Detroit, some in Ohio, Detroit and Ohio. But I want to talk about what, if you watch this show, what do they do to the people? What do they do to the, the criminals? Let me tell you what they do. And it's focused, I'm telling you, it's, ain't nobody on the screen but us, okay? Ninety, the majority of the people they're chasing are black. Okay, so let's, let's get that out the way. So they're painting a bad picture 
of how evil we can be or how evil our society is when it's really just a few un, uh, people who are uneducated and fell into the trap of that the, our enemy has set for them. But So here we go. They're sitting there and they're being interviewed and they're, they're, they, they are lying to them. They are telling them they got witnesses. They're telling them. And you know what? The guilt. See, what we don't realize and what the trap, the people that are trapped don't realize is that the Bible don't change. See, the blood of Abel cried out when Cain slew him and it caused Cain not to rest. OK, there was no rest for him because of the sin in which he had committed because the heavens, the blood of Abel demanded justice from the earth. It demanded justice in the universe. And so because of that crying out, because of the spilled blood, there was no peace in the life of gain. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. <coughs> with there being no peace in his life, with there being no peace in his life, mm, that still holds true today. When innocent blood is shed on behalf of, of some evil person, there is no peace in that evil person's life. And the demonic will tell you in order for them to get rest, they have to commit another sin on top of it in order for them to rest, which multiplies and multiplies because the next day they still don't get no rest. The blood of the innocent cries out for justice. So when you see them sitting here in the interview of this first 48 television show, they're sitting there and the police are lying to them. You have people with doctorate and masters and bachelor's degrees who have taken hours and hours of study on how to crack a criminal. And here you have this criminal with an eighth grade education trying to outsmart these people. Are you kidding me? It is a trap that has been set up and they continuously exploit the people who falls in them. And so here they are. They're sitting in the trap and they're getting questioned. And because they have not had rest because of the crying out of the universe, the crying out of the innocent blood, when they tell the truth, I want you to watch a show of it if you haven't watched it. When they finally tell the truth, you look up and you see it's like a sigh of relief that comes over to them. It's like they finally find a place where they can rest. Why? Because they did not know peace. There is no peace when you go down that path. What does it say in the Bible? It said in Isaiah 59 verse uh he said, he said, the way, verse 8, the way of peace they do not know, and there is no justice in their way. They have made their path crooked. Whoever walks in them does not know peace. Peace is so important, saints of the Most High God. Peace is so important because without peace, you get no rest. Uh, 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 you have to understand something. It says this, Isaiah 59, verse 9 says, Therefore, justice is far from us, nor does righteousness overtake us. We wait for light, but there is darkness for brightness, but we walk in gloom. Why? Because they have fell in the trap of this society. Amen. This society is, is set up for trap. Oh, I'm not finished yet. It is set up. It's in verse 10. He said, we grope along the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we have no had no eyes. We stumble as noonday, as in the night among those who are vigorous. We are as dead men. We all, verse 11, we all roar like bears and mourn sadly like doves. We look for justice, but there is none for salvation, but it's far from us. They, their iniquities are multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. It's, uh, we're lit. We're not. This is not something that's going on in the past. This is happening right now. We're living this today. You have those who have devised this plan 
and continuing to get richer because the plan they designed also designed to, they designed it to make them rich. Ah, uh, cause see, it ain't over once you go to the jail. That was just that was just the scheme to get you in their money making machine. Okay, let's talk about it. They, how do we make money off of a prisoner? Simple. You give him minimum food. You give him one scoop of this, one scoop of that, one scoop of this, and a small drink of water. That's it. The jail system is not designed to feed you till you are full. And that's the what. See, we want to glorify jail on TV, but we don't want to tell you the truth of what's going on in there. Oh, you getting one scoop, one scoop, one scoop. Mm hmm. And when you turn your back, the bigger guys going to take the food from the little ones. Amen. They take it. That's that's what they do. This system is designed. So here we are. We're locked up. They're giving you minimum portions. So then you have to buy from the commissary. You get your parents or somebody that, that's on the outside to send money to buy you food. And, and, and they're not selling anything healthy. So let, let's just keep talking. I want to... I want you to understand how serious these our enemy is and what he has done and how he has set us up for this trap and we're in it. I know because I have a brother in the system and I send him money for I send him food every month. I send him food. Yes, I do. I send him this is a, a thing called I care gifts. I send him a package of $100 worth of stuff every month. What? What let me let me just give you a hint of what it is. Let me let me just I I got it here. He gets two 12 ounce sodas, 30 packs of ramen noodles, 33 bags of the small potato chips, three condiment packets. One may be cheese, one may be relish, one may be hot. Three con three condiment packages. One cookie pack, which is like a six pack of cookies. You know them with the crackers. You got three of them in there, six of them in there. He gets one cookie pack. And all of that costs me $70 to ship it to him. The total, including shipping fees, it is $69. Okay. Okay. We ain't gonna even deal with the phone calls, but since the pandemic, and they didn't lift the pandemic, the phone calls are 18 cents a minute. Now, if you know anything about voice over IP, everybody got internet. So the phone calls is really about $10 a, $10 a month, if that. But at 18 cents a minute, I'm making money hand over foot. Now, all the items I just explained to you, I, if you, if you get a chance, pull out your Walmart app. I want you to pull out your Walmart app and take a look at it. Because I looked it up. You can get 24 packages of ramen noodle for $4.80, okay? $4.80. You can get an assorted bag of chips, the little snack size, for 18 chips for $6.98. That's $7. So, that's $14. So, $4.80, I'm up to $14. So, I'm up to $18.80. I got two 12-ounce sodas. And uh, one package of cookies, which is about 50, uh, 30, if you pound it, about 22 cents. And then you get the what? The two sodas. Okay. So a total, I'm just going to round it up to say I spent $20. Okay. I bought $20 worth of other stuff and I, what it actual cost, and it cost me $70 to send that to the jail. That is a 300% profit. They are making because they got fell in the trap. 300% profit. You have to understand something. There is, it is a trap. We have an enemy that's walking among us, that's programming our children to shed blood, to walk around and sin. Romans 3 verse 9 tells it like this, and I'm reading from the modern English version. It says, what then? Are we better than they? No, not at all. For we have already charged that both Jews and Gentiles are under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Verse 11 says, there is no one who understands and there is no one who seeks after God. 
They have all turned aside. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Their throats are open grave and their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of vipers is under their lips. Oh my goodness. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are their paths. Did you hear what I said? Destruction and misery are their path. Don't you know when a young man today gets caught up in, the, in, the, in this lifestyle, he shoots at somebody that made him mad and he hits the wrong innocent person. He finds no sleep. He's 21, 22 years old. <coughs> he goes to the court system and that's when he realizes he needs God. Because now they give him 35 years in jail, if not life. 35 year sentence at 22 years old. That means you're going to come out of jail at 57 years old with no job, no resources, 57 years old. And what woman wants to have a child with a 57 year old man who has no resources? A whole life is gone, is gone because of what? Because they fell into the trap. Saints of the Most High God, you got to start talking to your children today. You have to start talking to the youth today and let them know this life that they perceive as glorious, that they then painted a picture of balling out or whatever. It is a lie from the pit of hell. And that's where we'll wind them up. He said, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are their paths. And they do not know the way of peace. You will not find rest in that situation. You will not find peace in those situations. There, and here's the kicker. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy because we have failed. And I'm, I'm going to just be sarcastic. We have failed falling for the banana in the tailpipe. Yes, the generation, my generation, the generation before me and after me have fallen because we have failed because we refuse to humble ourselves to one another. We refuse to humble ourselves and stay the path of righteousness. We chose what the world was offering us instead of choosing what God said we should do. And we ought to be in a place of repentance right now, not just for us, but for our seed, for our children, for our children's children. Because right now they are programmed for the next three generations to go to jail. That ought to make you angry. Oh, do we need God? Oh, do we need a deliverer? Do we need a savior? We need a savior right now because in this place, they, they don't know peace. Our children, they don't know peace. They don't know peace. Amen, amen. They don't know peace. So I'm here to tell you this morning. We got peace. It has to be instilled. Parents, you got to make the sacrifice. You chose this lifestyle. You got to make the sacrifice. And teach your children what God say. Teach them what thus saith the Lord. Sit down and have a Bible study. Sit down and show them what God say they should do in certain situations. If you can't drag them to church, drag them to the living room. Sit down and have a word with them. Because the foundation of their characters are being formed by our enemies. Amen. They are teaching them not to get along with one another. They're teaching them how to kill one another. They're teaching them how to be angry. They're teaching them how to respond in anger. And they're all setting them up so that they can feed them their money when they get locked up. They're teaching them how not to listen to authority. Amen. I'm sorry. Everybody's under authority. There's no one that is not under authority. The president of the United States is under the authority of the Congress. 
The Congress is under the authority of the president and under the authority of the U.S. citizens. Everybody is under authority. Amen. And so you have to learn to respect authority. Man, I tell you this. We, as we go before the throne this morning, as we go before the throne in prayer, I want us to realize, I want us to lift up our children. I want us to pray for the things that they're going through. We want to ask for forgiveness for us. Who, not, didn't, who did not see the enemy at work. And those of us who did see it got tired of trying to tell our spouses this is what was going on and lost hope. This is the world we live in today. This is why we can't even drive through our own communities of color. We can't do it because the enemy has programmed the children. It had programmed them to be swift to run the evil and to do iniquity. They feet run to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts of nothing but iniquity and their waste their ways are wasting and destruction for all that cross their paths. But God is the God of the turnaround. He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, repent, repent, he would heal the land. We're here from heaven. There's some things that we got to do to get ourselves back in the right, not only right standing with God, but to get our children, get this nation in which we dwell in. He said, those that we come into captivity in this place, that I will bring thee out and cause you to worship me in this place. We're living this. We're living this right now. And we need the intercessors. We need those pastors. We need those who wearing the breastplate of righteousness daily to intercede on behalf of the children. On, the, on behalf of the children's children. It's not about mine. I No, my children are fine. Yeah, your children are fine. But what about your neighbors? I remember in the day when, when, when uh, the neighbors cared about the neighbor's children. They cared. Let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning, O oh God. We're asking for your forgiveness, O oh Lord. For, Father, we have sinned and fallen short of your glory, God. We have sinned in the way that we have chosen the ways of this world instead of choosing what you have said that we should do. Father, we have chosen iniquity over righteousness. We have chosen sin over the ways that you have described for us. Your Bible tells us in Proverbs, the, the writer, the author tells his son to listen and pay close attention and grab a hold to wisdom. Father, I pray right now that we grab a hold to wisdom. We grab a hold to this wisdom, this gospel, these directions that you have given us on how to live and how to prosper in this land. We are here, God. We are here coming out of captivity because you allowed us to go into captivity. But I know it is you who can bring us out. If we would just humble ourselves and pray. Father, I pray for every incarcerated individual right now, God. Those that were led astray by the traps. Father, who find themselves peeking out of prison walls right now, over wall, out of bars, trying to just to be glad to get the sun on their skin today. I lift them up before you, those that have no one loved ones that's buying them food to eat, Father, as they are trapped in this system, oh God. 
Father, as they are trapped in this system, it's even bringing out even the worst of characters of, of society, bringing more sin, bringing more iniquity upon them. It's multiplying the more and the more. Father, I intercede before him. Father, I lay between the porch and the altar this morning and cry out to you, God. Help the children, God. Father, I pray right now that there be a stirring in the spirit of everyone, that there be a righteous call from the inside, Father, that they know justice, that your word, though even the word that they have heard, God, let it begin to rise up and set the standard, oh God. Let it set the standard. Every Father, there's children that have never been to church, but God, even in their Places where they are right now, Father, let the word come to them, O oh God. Let it begin to rise up and set the standard, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let it set the standard, O oh God. Father, let them change, turn from their wicked ways, O oh God. And Father, I pray that you forgive the parents. We ask for forgiveness as parents, O oh God. Forgiveness as church leaders. We ask for forgiveness, O oh God. No, oh, Father, we just thank you this morning. Lord, hear the hearts, cries of your people. And Father, we thank you right now for sending your ministering angels to minister to them, Father, to let them that know no peace, O oh God, Father, let them begin to find you so that they will find rest. They will even find freedom where they are because you are that kind of God. And I just thank you for it right now, Lord. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I want to thank each of you for tuning in to Kingdom Application Ministries. And again, today's message was, they know no peace. Peace, or peace they know not. Peace they know not. As we continue in this series dealing with righteousness, uh, I just thank you, uh, God. I thank God for each of you. And if you have an opportunity, if you, like even the news, I, I have turned off the morning news now. I, I, don't, I don't even listen to it. I, I, I have to hear the good news. And if you would like, there is a prayer call that goes on that starts at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Six, and it's called Praying Without Ceasing with a Pastor Bernice Burton. And I'm telling you, it is the good news of the gospel. If you would like that number to call in 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and they are led by the Holy Spirit, if you would like that number, inbox me and I'll send it to you. If you just want to listen to something other than COVID this, and, and this person got shot, and that person got killed, and this house burned down, and, and this... It's too much. You have to guard the battlefield of your mind. And in guarding that battlefield, you got to protect what goes in and what comes out. Amen? Amen. So if you like that number, please inbox me. Also, there is a grief. Uh, if you've lost someone, if you lost someone, there is a call specifically designed to help people deal with grief. That's on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. Inbox me. I'll send you these numbers. These are all tools that God has placed in the kingdom for us to use. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And I look forward to joining you guys. I'll see you again on Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. I look forward to being with you again. So if not, God bless you, y'all. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy this Sabbath and rest. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm Pastor Henry of Kingdom Application Ministries, and we'll see you again soon.